If I ask you to choose the largest between India and Alaska, which one would you pick? And what about the UK and New Zealand? Uh, let's throw Malaysia just for good measure. Argentina and Greenland? I mean, every other country and Greenland. What if I told you your answers were wrong? Well, I actually don't know that. Maybe you already knew the answers and are just watching because you like my videos. So just hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't for more videos like this one. But if you have them wrong, let me tell you why and that it's not your fault. We have many deceiving maps and it has everything to do with something named map projection. This is how maps lie to you. But first, why are they lying? Well, to begin, they have to. Contrary to what sadly many people tend to believe, our beautiful blue dot in space is a sphere. And last time I checked, our preferred method for making maps is a square. Well, more of a rectangle, but you get the idea. This is important because it results in that making maps is incredibly difficult. I mean, anyone could make a map, but an accurate one? That's a challenge. Why do you ask? Well, because spheres are 3D objects and we cannot easily unfold its area into a 2D plane. And by cannot easily unfold, I mean it's impossible. Don't believe me? Try it. Or don't try it because there is already mathematical proof that it's not possible. At least, not without causing some sort of distortion. So, to be able to display the area of a sphere into a 2D plane, we use a technique called map projection. I won't get into all the details of map projection because, well, it's a really complicated thing. You just gotta know that it roughly consists in putting the Earth into a 3D unfoldable shape like a cone, a cylinder, and a D20 die among others. This is done with some math wizardry so we can project the surface of the sphere into the surface of these shapes and afterwards unfold it to get a 2D plane. That is how we got this map. If it looks familiar, it's because it's the most widely used map in the world. It's the map used by Google, Microsoft and Apple for their apps, and it's shown in classrooms around the obvious but apparently not so much globe. This map is a result of what we know as the Mercator projection. This is a cylindrical projection and it's almost 500 years old. This wouldn't be an Unravel video if I didn't tell you the origins of this, so let's begin. The Mercator projection was a brainchild of Flemish geographer Gerardus Mercator in 1569. Nice. He published it with the name Novae Tauta Orbis Terrae Descriptio ad Usum Navigator which I'm sure I mispronounce horribly. If you're like me and you don't speak Renaissance Latin, this roughly translates to new and more complete representation of the terrestrial globe properly adapted for use in navigation. And maybe you don't notice this, but this map was so ahead of its time that it couldn't be used for navigation. They didn't have the technology in the 16th century to be able to use it properly at sea. So it was pretty and very rectangular, but not very useful for the thing it was made for. We had to wait until the 18th century to be able to use it properly, and it was a game changer. With some simple math and a compass, we could map a curse in straight lines. Which are not straight lines in reality, but it didn't matter, it was easy and it worked. But as every existing projection, the Mercator projection has some benefits and some downsides. The Mercator projection is very good at preserving the real shape of land masses and it's perfect to gain a simple sense of direction. When you have an angle in the map, you know the angle is the same in real life. Up is up and right is right. It has angle accuracy, but it comes at a cost. And the cost in this case is area. The further you move from the equator, the greater the distortion and the bigger the change in area. If we put these circles, called Tissot's indicatrices, we can see how the distortion affects the area in different parts of the map. We can also see that this confirms that the Mercator is actually pretty good at preserving shape, because the circles are actually perfect circles. If we grab another projection like, I don't know, like the Gold Peters projection, we see that they don't look like circles at all but more like ovals. This projection, by the way, is also a cylindrical projection and it's very similar to the Mercator, but it aims to correct the area problem by making every country the real apparent size. But as you can see, it's very bad at preserving the real shape of countries. It just looks like a badly stretched Mercator. So sure, the Mercator is pretty and simple, but it has greatly distorted our view of the actual size of some of these places. If we adjusted these countries to their real sizes, it would look something like this. That's a pretty significant change. 
And many cartographers around the world also think this is a problem. So, there have been a million different projections trying to correct this size issue. The Gold Peters projection is just one of many, many other types of projections out there. Many of them with some sort of trade-off between accuracy in direction, area, shape, distance, and bearing. But I want to give a special shout-out to one in particular. The Dimaxion map is a pretty exceptional type of map. This one is a projection of the Earth into an icosahedron that is then unfolded. This is the one from the D20 joke I made earlier. I mean, just look at it, that's a D20. And I think this is my favorite so far. It looks incredible, it shows the land masses of the world like an interconnected big island. Sure, it's not practical for a multitude of reasons, but it sure is beautiful. So, b -b backing up a little, if there are so many alternatives to the Mercator, why do we still use it? Well, as with many things, because it's easy. That accuracy in angles is incredibly useful for taking directions when you are driving, for example. That's why so many companies decide to use it as the main source for their maps. A left turn is a left turn, not a negative 69 degree turn. And also, other projections are actually used for different applications. It's just that we are used to seeing the Mercator cater more often in our daily lives. But some companies have already heard the criticism, and Google for example has chosen to show a globe in their maps and instead switch to the Mercator just when you zoom in enough. Which shows that in the end, no map is perfect. Different tasks require different tools for their specific purpose. So, if you want an accurate representation of Earth, nothing beats the old reliable and for some reason sometimes denied good globe. Uh oh, and answering the questions from the beginning, because how else were you gonna know if I didn't tell you? India, Malaysia, Argentina, and compared to the other countries, the country not so country of Greenland would be the 12th biggest. I really hope that you enjoyed that video, I've been wanting to make it for a very long time now. If you liked it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and comment, and all that stuff. If you want more extra bits, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I really hope to see you on the next one, have a nice day, and goodbye.